Welcome to the WHBC Sunday Talks podcast, where we discuss theological and cultural topics. This new series is called Why. Churches need to know and communicate why they do what they do. Why should we support missions? Why do we exist? Why do we sing in church? Most of us communicate starting with what and how and neglect to tell why. In this series, Dr. Larry White highlights some big questions and explains why churches do what they do. There are so many answers that need to be communicated clearly so that we understand why we do these things. That way, what we do and how we do them will be clear. Hey, welcome to Sunday Talks. We are in a series, as you heard in the introduction, that we're calling Why. We're talking about why we as Woodland Heights Baptist Church do some of the things we do, believe some of the things we believe, and why we participate in some of the things. What is our purpose? Uh, why do we exist? And then again, why should someone care about the things that we are, we're talking about? And so last week we started a two-part episode with talking about why we're Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist as the Southern Baptist Convention, Southern Baptist uh, denomination, um, why we've chosen as a church to be part of that. We have been since our very beginning. And I know a lot of the things that I will share are very personal because this is my my belief why I, I am. And, and some of these today, as we talk more so about not so much about the doctrine, but about, about the mission that we're on. We did talk last time about uh, doctrinal matters and uh, we introduced you to, if you didn't, weren't aware of it, to the Baptist faith and message, which is a doctrinal statement that we have adopted uh, on numerous occasions, uh, started back early in our history, and then last was updated in the year 2000. Uh, and so that should be the groundwork. That should be the basis. I, I believe if you're going to be part of a, a group of churches, uh, the main reason should be doctrinal reasons. What do we believe and why do we believe it? And those should be in agreement. And so that's why, first of all, we're Southern Baptists. But added to that, and one way, one reason I've, there's others that believe similar to us, but I'm so thankful for the for the mission and the focus of Southern Baptist uh, work and when it comes to missions and, and kingdom work that goes on around the world. Um, uh, you know, you can be on mission, and if your message is not true or correct, then uh, it really doesn't matter. And so that biblical doctrine is is the foundation, and both of these really go go hand in hand. Uh, Southern Baptists, just like as it comes to doctrine, are not have not perfected missions. Um, we make mistakes from time to time. We make course corrections in what we're doing and how we're going about it. But I can honestly say, as a Southern Baptist for most of my life, uh, that I am very pleased that uh, where we are as Southern Baptists today and what we're doing in, in taking the gospel to the world, uh, both locally and, and, again, around the world, uh, I'm as excited about that as any other time in my life. Um, being on mission means that we are giving and we're going. It means both of those things. We need to do both. There's a lot of churches that are what I would call mission-minded. They they have they think about missions. They talk about missions. They may even give to missions, but that's about the extent of it. That they, they, it's on their mind, but it's not something they're actively involved in. And so I think for the church, we need to be both mission-minded, but also mission-active. What are we doing to be put into action what we believe and why we believe it and getting the gospel out there? And so. Uh, we, we need to be giving, and we need to be going, and we need to be supporting those that go. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, one, we need to give our money. I mean, it, it takes money to do do ministry, to do do uh, mission work, uh, giving our support vocally, and uh, letting people know that what what we what we are and who we are about. But also giving uh, and giving certainly financially, but giving through prayer and, and supporting those works through prayer. The way we give our money. Uh, as Southern Baptist um, is is through a plan that was devised in 1925. So next year will be a hundred years that we've been we have been using this same plan, and probably there've been some fine tuning along the way, but it's been initially this the, essentially the same thing. It's called the cooperative program. Others have mimicked it. Others have tried to model it because I'm I, I'm just I'm telling you I think it's the best way to support kingdom work across the board, hands down. Uh, and I'm thankful that we have it. I'm thankful that we use it. And uh, at times, people get upset with Southern Baptists for various reasons, but most everyone jumps in on board when we think, talk about the cooperative program. This is how the International Mission Board, the North American Mission Board, uh, the six seminaries and the various boards and other ministries of the convention are able 
to faithfully carry out the gospel work uh, for the glory of God. This is the way they do it. Uh, it's it's uh, ingenious, this whole idea of the cooperative program. It enables missions and organizations that Southern Baptist churches and, and the convention supports. 3,500 missions actively serving around the world today. Many of those serving among unreached people groups in some very challenging areas that they could not have gotten to. They certainly couldn't be supported uh, without the cooperative program. 600 new church plants in the North, in North, Amer- North America alone. 25,000 students uh, presently uh, taking classes enrolled in our, in our uh, Baptist, six Baptist seminaries. Uh, and, and just let me just say there, while they're, they're getting what I think is one of the best theological educations they can get, they're getting it at a discounted rate. Comparably at other seminaries and colleges, it would be a lot more expensive. But because of the cooperative program, they're able to get discounted rates on that. And I say this, this is my testimony. I'm grateful that I was able to attend a Baptist college for four years and two different seminaries over six years of time and get three degrees and not be heavily in debt from any of those institutions because of the cooperative program, because of Southern Baptist. And so I'm thankful that there's many thousands of others that could give that testimony. The cooperative program, in addition, enables us to do disaster relief uh, across the world at a moment's notice, to send teams uh, not only here locally, but to send them into Africa and other places where natural disaster takes place. Uh, It's critical that we get that aid there, and when we do, we also take the gospel Disaster Relief and Send Relief, those organizations are usually the first ones in and the last ones out when you think about uh, these disasters. In addition, here in the state, we're able to do campus ministries like the Baptist Collegiate Ministry that we support as a church, in addition to giving the cooperative program, able to provide foster care and aid through the children's homes and and, uh, the family ministries that we do, uh, establish churches here, in fact, through the North American Mission Board and through Arkansas Baptist. Uh, We get contributions that come to uh, Woodland Heights Hispanic Baptist Church. Part of part of how we fund that church is through through this 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 uh, organization. We support again two colleges here in Arkansas, which I benefited from attending one of those, and and then provide resources to fifteen hundred Southern Baptist churches across the state. And I think about that, and I think, well, how would a church like Woodland Heights or any other individual church uh, be able to begin to do what we do without the cooperative program? they wouldn't, and because they couldn't do it. It's just, it would be impossible. Uh, here's what most churches do, and I, I know I'm making a general statement, but typically churches will, will, will support a handful of missionaries, however many they can, they can fund. Sometimes it may be one or two, sometimes it may be 45 or 50 that they're supporting in some way, in a general way, not, not supporting them completely, but supporting them in some way. Maybe they can actually support one solely, and maybe a couple of ministries over here. But they put all their eggs in the, that, that small basket, and they support that. One of the great questions, going back to the doctrine, is how do we know where those organizations and ministries align? You know, we, we, when we support groups outside of Southern Baptist, we, do a, a, we try to be very thorough to know where they line up doctrinally. How do, what do they believe? What is, what is like groups like Renewal Ranch and Bethlehem House, other ministries that are not typically Southern Baptist, they're—, they're non-denominational. What do they believe? We want to line that up, but thankfully we don't have to do that with 6,000 missionaries. We know where they stand because they're part of the Southern Baptist Convention. And so these other churches that are not part of a group like Southern Baptist are having to discover that, learn what that is. Plus, those same missionaries and ministries are having to return to that individual church many times, probably throughout the year, to say, hey, just want to remind you to give us some funds. Southern Baptist missionaries not only don't do that, they cannot do that. They, they are not allowed to ask for help, uh, financial aid, financial help, other than through the cooperative program, which, which supports all of them. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great idea and it's a great thought. And because of that, uh, they're budgeted by those 47,000 Southern Baptist churches giving together. I was looking at this this morning. Over the last 10 years, Woodland Heights Baptist Church has given close to $1.5 million through the cooperative program, this kingdom work that we, we do together, in addition to how we give otherwise and other things. We do, are still are able to do lots of local ministry and support our church and things we're doing here. And thousands of people have heard the gospel, and thousands of people were saved, and churches started, and ministers were trained, and children were rescued out of bondage because of our work together with Southern Baptists as, as we're on mission with them. 
th- things we could never have done here locally, things we never could have done alone, we're convinced that, that as a Southern Baptist, we do things better together. By the way, I don't know if you knew this, but did you know that the average Southern Baptist church has in attendance on a Sunday morning 75 or less people? Think about that for a moment. The average, the average, that means there's a lot under 75 and there's a lot over 75, but the average is 75. Particularly in Arkansas, there's a whole lot of those that are under 75. But that church that runs 50 people can be involved in all the ministries we are and can be be a, a, a partner, not equal in giving, but equal in the sacrifices that we make as we serve together. Think about that. Most of our churches couldn't support one missionary alone, couldn't even start a church, couldn't send out a disaster relief team. But collectively, in 2022, the 47,000 Southern Baptist churches across America gave $457 million to the cooperative program. $457 million in one year to fund all these works. And that church running 50 had a part in that. They're part of something much bigger than they could ever do alone. And so so all, all this is, is important to all size churches. In addition to that, when thinking about giving, and I'm not going to just talk about giving today, but, but it is a big part of being involved in missions. We give through three offerings that we do every year, annual offerings that are named after three prominent ladies, Lottie Moon, Annie Armstrong, and Dixie Jackson. They support uh, different areas of missions. Lottie Moon, around Christmas time, is focused on international missions. It's the biggest offering that we give. It's also the biggest offering that Southern Baptists give. And here's the neat thing about Lottie Moon and these other offerings is that this money is not budgeted like the cooperative program giving money is. This money is, is over and above. This is a love offering, if you will. And none of it's used for administration. None of it's used for advertising or anything else. These, this money goes directly to the field. I've been on the field. I've been in Jordan back uh, many years ago and was with a missionary couple there. And the excitement that they shared with us, this was in January, that they had received this donation through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering that year to buy a vehicle. It was a little, small, compact car. They'd been on the field for a couple of decades, walking everywhere they went or taking a bus. Through Lottie Moon Gifts, over and above, they were able to purchase a car so they could get about and do the work that they were called to do. That's, that example is over and over again through our giving in that way. Annie Armstrong is the same way with North American Missions, directly to the field. Dixie Jackson, the same way with that. It's, it's over and above. It's a love offering in our state missions. Again, I've talked a lot about giving. Giving is very important, but uh, we, we can give the cooperative pro- program and do those, do those offerings and still only be a mission-minded church, but not a mission-active church. We're called to go as well. We're called to, to, to give of our money, to give in our prayer, but we're also called to go and be actively in, involved in going. Uh, we are, we, all, we want to be, as a Southern Baptist, a mission-active people. We have full-time missionaries all over the world, full-time missionaries uh, here in Arkansas. We also have short-term missionaries that go from places like Woodland Heights to serve for a short period of time, maybe for a week or two, or maybe for even longer than that, uh, that we, we support those as well. One of the major arms of, of uh, support for those that go and the encouragement that they receive comes from a group that, that again, is all across Southern Baptist Convention. We have one that meets here in our church. It's the Women's Missionary Union. Been around long as Southern, nearly as long as Southern Baptists have. Uh, and a group of our ladies meet on uh, the uh, second Tuesday of, of each month. Uh, that morning at 10 o'clock, they meet in room 301. They're called the Women's Mission. Uh, Women on Mission, part of the Women's Missionary Union, but Women on Mission. They meet just before the midday uh, manna women's luncheon that happens every month. Right before that, they come and they gather together to talk about missions, to pray for missions, and find out ways we can be supportive of that uh, and encourage those that are going and those that that are participating in the work. And I think about this, where would we be? without WMU as Southern Baptists. I'm not sure we would we would even exist today without the work that they have done. Here's some of the ways that we're involved in in going here locally as part of this church and what some of these are local to to Woodland Heights. Some of these are are part of the Arkansas Baptist State Convention or or uh, uh, the greater organization of Southern Baptists. One thing we do every two things we do every year, we do the hunt at Easter time when we're it's you know so well, it's just an Easter egg hunt. No, it's 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 an outreach event. It's a mission. Uh, our mission is to get as many people here as we can to share the gospel with every one of them and then hopefully encourage them 
further in their walk with the Lord, encourage them to get active in a church. Do the same thing in the fall and October with a fall festival. Again, it could look like a, just a bunch of candy being handed out to kids and a lot of families here, but the gospel is presented to everyone that's here. We're going to do something unique this year in partnership with the Arkansas Baptist Missions team. Uh, we're going to, and on June 15th, we're going to host a medical dental clinic for the whole community. Uh, our, our primary focus is going to be on our Hispanic church and helping them out with this ministry. And so right now we're looking for volunteers in the medical and dental field, but also just uh, anyone who might be interested in helping out with that. That's going to happen this summer. <coughs> Excuse me. Other things we do are one day serve local. We do some service projects here locally. We do Acts 1-8 mission, mission uh, uh, event that happens every fall in different parts of the state. We have, met, we have teams that go other places as well. Our college has been very active in this uh, and appreciate Hannah Zerbel. She does a great job in not only talking about missions, but every year taking teams of students uh, often to beach reach at spring break and then usually somewhere internationally as well to get them connected. And I, I encourage our college students that uh, while they're young to to explore missions, to go out and do some mission work while they're while they're able to travel while they're while they're interested in these things and while maybe there's some opportunities before them that might not be available to everybody else but not only that we encourage them i do to go beyond that and our church has supported this as well and what if you finish college you're not tied down you got some you got uh, you got more freedom than you're probably ever going to have in your life you may not have a lot of money but you got some freedom you've got a you've got a plan a career ahead of you why not go serve the lord in, in some place where you could serve as a missionary and serve in your position. Maybe that's here locally. Maybe that's in, in a major sin city that North American Mission Board has cities across North America where we're planting churches, major cities. Maybe it's going internationally. We have two, two students who graduated who are doing that now. One, uh, Madison Childress, is serving with the North American Mission Board in Oklahoma City. That She chose to do that after college, and that's been become hopefully a career for her. We have another that's in Eastern Europe that has as as uh, graduated from college and now serving in that way. We got a couple of couples and their families that are serving in different parts of the world that have taken that another step and they've done that initial service in, in, in serving the Lord, but now they've chosen as a career to serve with the International Mission Board. All those are ways that we are we're going. We're trying to get people to go. You know, another great opportunity locally is through disaster relief. A lot of all volunteer led. Uh, people right here in the community in Faulkner County that are part of the disaster relief team. When disaster hits Arkansas or neighboring state, they're able to go. That even happens on a worldwide level with send relief. And so there's so many ways to get connected and uh, uh, to be involved. And, you know, I've, I've long uh, been convinced that the best way to do missions and, and to, to take the gospel, the most comprehensive work uh, here and abroad is through the Southern Baptist Convention. Again, there are a lot of other groups, and, and our missionaries will tell you that when they go on the field in a foreign nation, they're often working with other groups, and we need those groups, and they're doing good work. But I'm convinced, I've even had people tell me from other groups, that what we do through the cooperative program, what we do through theological training, what we do in, in working together collectively with 47,000 churches is the best way to do this. And I challenge you to explore that for yourself. You know, one one thing that, that I, I Carla and I get to do every year is to go to the Southern Baptist Convention. We kind of have a, an annual meeting of celebrating what the Lord has done and also looking toward the future. I never come away from that not being convinced, even more so, of the need for this for this work of Southern Baptist, but also convinced that this is really the best way that we can do this in the most economical way, the way we can have the greatest impact. And I want to support it even more so every time. And I always hear sometimes at that meeting, sometimes after that meeting and around that meeting or, or at other times of the year, people make arguments against Southern Baptist Convention, maybe on a doctrinal issue, maybe on, on something they see as a uh, something missionally that's not the way it ought to be. And and again, not knocking anybody who, who has a difference of opinion, but most of the times having talked with people, even sometimes even within the church, oftentimes their argument is simply out of ignorance. It's just that they don't know. They've heard somebody. I, you know, I've got a cousin that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, and they heard this, or, or this is what I think I, someone told me is 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 part of the doctrines of Southern Baptists or how they do mission work. And 
you know, it's all available for us. You can go and look for yourself of how things work. And we are certainly a, a, a organization that's, that's led by lay people, led by, by members of our churches. And uh, our missionaries, uh, again, are out there doing great work. And, and uh, we need to see that firsthand. I'm grateful uh, to be a Southern Baptist today. And you may say, well, the reason you're Southern Baptist is because you've always been Southern Baptist and you were born a Southern Baptist, you'll die a Southern Baptist. And there is some truth to that. I was born a Southern Baptist. My family were, was attending Pickles Gap Baptist Church when I was born. Uh, there was a time and a season in, in my childhood, though, that we did attend another church. And uh, uh, that that flavored some of my views on things. And because we had family members that went to that church and other churches that, that I I didn't just always think about, well, well, how does Southern Baptist believe? And a couple of times in my life, I've really been challenged to think, well, why am I Southern Baptist, both on conviction and both on doctrine? And the first time was when I was in college, as I was exploring the ministry, I began to ask, well, is this is this truly the way that I want to be? This is what my parents have been, but do I want to do this? Do I want to follow this path? And as I studied and explored other denominations, uh, other other ways of doing church and doing missions. I came back fully convinced as a college student that Southern Baptist was who I was in my own convictions and who I wanted to be a part of in working and doing the mission work and carrying out the Great Commission. Then, then later on, after college, after the first round of seminary, uh, church contacted me. Good church in a great location, had, had a lot of things going for it, but they were not a Southern Baptist church. They were non-denominational church. There were Southern Baptist people in their church, and there were other groups there as well. They were doing a lot of stuff, and it was, it was, you know, I was still pretty young, and and it was exciting to think about about this kind of work and and doing it in the location that this church was located in. And I spent some time praying about that. I spent some time getting some godly counsel from other people, and I'm 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 so glad I didn't make that leap at that point in time. Not that I wouldn't have been doing. God's work and doing it even in God's way, and it would have been fruitful and productive. But uh, as as good as all these other organizations are and churches are, and Southern Baptists, again, are not perfect, but compared with all the other ways to do church and all the other ways to do missions and all the other ways to do kingdom work, I'm still convinced Southern Baptist is the best way to do it. And uh, I will keep looking, I'll keep searching, and I'll keep, I'll keep expecting of us as Southern Baptists to be who we're called to be. But I want to encourage you to do the same thing. I want to encourage you to look at what Southern Baptists believe uh, and what, what we're doing. Uh, one, a couple of places you can go online to find this is SBC, Southern Baptist Convention, sbc.net. We'll tell you what's going on around the world, what's going on in our nation. There'll be lots of links there on that website to help you find uh, uh, ways you can be involved, ways you can support that, what our monies are going for, what we're doing. Uh, You'll see our seminaries and those things there as well. And then here locally in, the, in Arkansas, absc.org, Arkansas Baptist State Convention, absc.org. We'll also have a lot of those things that are happening nationally, but also things that are happening here locally, uh, what our teams are doing at the state convention, what the entities that we work with are doing. And uh, uh, you can see that on that website and get a lot of more information. I want to encourage you. Explore it for yourself. Uh, know what you believe, why you believe it. Know know why we do what we do, and uh, that'll I think help you be more supportive in that. Now, coming weeks we're going to do some other things along with this why series and some other topics we're going to talk about. So I encourage you to stay tuned, keep keep uh, watching, keep listening. Always, I want to thank you for listening and for participating in this edition of Sunday Talks. Again, we'll be back next week, and I look forward to hearing from you call or write or, or text uh, let me know how, how this may have impacted your questions you may have and we'll get back together next week and do this again Woodland Heights Baptist Church exists to lift up Jesus by being rooted in his truth growing in spiritual maturity and reaching our city and the nations with his gospel if you'd like to learn more about Woodland Heights please visit our website at whbcconway.org and thank you for listening to Sunday Talks